Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. Welcome again to another compelling program where we talk to big thinkers. Right out of the box, we kick off with Dr. Timothy Eatman, who is the inaugural dean and professor of the Honors Living Learning Community at Rutgers University in Newark, one of our higher ed partners. Dr. Eatman, so good to have you with us. Steve, it is so good to be here. Thank you for your leadership in illuminating this kind of work. Well, I want to illuminate your work right now because, you know, people hear this term, the Honors Living Learning Community at Rutgers North. First of all, what is the program and why is it so important? Yeah, the, the Honors Living Learning Community, Steve, is a new opportunity for higher education institutions to understand what honors is. Like the idea that standardized tests really should be the be all end all to let folks know what honors is, to let folks know what it means to identify positive change agents for the society is beneath where we think we should be. So the chancellor, uh, Chancellor Cantor and her executive team. Nancy Cantor. Yes, in, in their uh, process of developing a strategic plan, initiated the Honors Living Learning Community as one of the signature initiatives for uh, Rutgers Newark at this time. You know, Doctor, let me, let me try this one on you. As a student of leadership who comes from, um, I'm a Rutgers alum, graduate school, doctoral program, part of the, taught at the Rutgers North campus for many years. Um, leadership has always been at the core of my uh, teaching and learning focus. Question, from a leadership perspective, what impact do you believe this particular program will have, not just on the students who are in it, but on them as future leaders? Yeah, Steve, it's really quite powerful uh, for me. I uh, know that what we are doing in higher education at Rutgers Newark is really opening up the way that we understand what's possible. We're refusing to continually overlook local talent. So the Honors Living Learning Community is comprised of over 50% of Newark students. And see, these students want to stay in Newark. They got into Duke and Michigan and Syracuse and other places, but we think it's honorable that they know the value of Newark, they want to stay in Newark, and we think they need support to do that. What could it do for a city like Brick City, Newark? What could it do for the city longer term? Well, I think the people who know the most about what kinds of things need to happen in the city come from the city, right? I've been at a lot of institutions all around the country, and most times students are way away from home and the community engagement projects that they do really are them visiting. But these students, Steve, are going home. They're going to their synagogues and mosques and churches, and they're doing these kind of ameliorative things that help to demonstrate the uh, brilliance and the aspirations that they have. And they are brilliant, Steve, uh, that they're bringing to bear within the newer community. You know, let me, let me try this one. I'm, it's interesting. You, you, you use the term traditional models, whether we're talking about standardizing testing, Dr. Eatman, or whatever the more traditional models are in higher ed. What do those traditional models and teaching, learning approaches in higher ed, what do they do to, in fact, make it harder for a more diverse student body of honor students? Yeah, well, Steve, listen, if your mother has been paying for you to take standardized test prep from elementary school, you ought to be able to do good on it. Right? Yeah, you're right. A lot of practice. <laughs> a lot of practice. Uh, and listen, I'm a social scientist. Uh, people laugh when I say this, but, uh, you know, I'm a quantitative sociologist. I'll make a survey out of anything. And my socks roll up and down when I can explain the variance on variables and on the dependent variable. And... These tests tell us what they explain, the variance, is about family wealth. That's what they explain. And, and that's okay. And listen, I'm not against uh, these sorts of tests. Listen, I have a daughter who's in an MD, PhD program right now. She took the MCAT. I want my surgeon to have done well on the MCAT. Don't get me there's wrong. A, there's a butt coming, Dr. Eatman. There's a butt coming. Go ahead. Yes. But if we are looking for dynamic, amazing leaders in a range of fields, I'm thinking of Vivian Peralta, who's off to Texas A&M with five-year full funding, uh, who's, uh, you know. Comes out of the program. She comes out of the, she's a graduate this year. Right. Uh, she's a, bi a biologist who's going to be a research scientist from Newark, but launching her into that space at, where she's doing that work in biosciences, but also socially conscious work is really critical. You know, you talk about being socially conscious. There's a social justice minor in this program. A, what is it? And again, 
it should be self-evident, but why is that so critically important for these students and for the leaders they will be moving forward? Yeah, Steve. Yeah, it's, it's really, really important. I, sh I should say that the HLLC at its base is two things. It is a merit scholarship. The and that's, by the way, that's the acronym for the Honors Living Learning Community. Absolutely. My apologies. The Honors That's okay. Living we'll learn community. that acronym over time. <laughs> I hope we do. <laughs> yeah, I hope you it really rallies and, and, and the whole world rallies around this model. Absolutely. Go ahead. Our, our vision is that it should be a, a national model. But the Honors Living Learning Community is a merit scholarship for room and board, Steve. It's not for tuition. It's for room and board. There are other ways that we work with students to assist them in getting uh, tuition uh, assistance. But it's also, as you mentioned, a curriculum. It's an 18 credit curriculum. So I mentioned Vivian before, she's a biology major, but her minor is in social justice. And so we have uh, three core courses that we do in the Honors Living Learning Community. Then the students have a set of electives and then they have a capstone and that comprises the, the experience. Real quick before I let you go, there's a, is there a Prudential Scholars Program? Woo! <laughs> you, yes, sir, you are talking about something really powerful. Uh, the Prudential Foundation had made a, a $10 million gift to endow a scholarship that we have mapped, Steve, to one of our pathways. It's called the Prudential Scholars um, uh, Scholarship, and uh, Newark students are able to enjoy uh, special resources in that context. I don't have more time to deal with it, to op unpack it, but I have to tell you that uh, Shanae Harris is the president of the foundation, and you know, uh, you know, Rob Falzon was is, was there and helped present the 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 award and organize the the bringing together of this real support. I mean, we our new eighty million dollar building is across the street from the Prudential Building, and so to be in fellowship with Prudential in this way, with uh, alumni like you, Steve, from Prudential, mentoring students, working closely with them under the guidance of Tiffany Williams and and at Prudential and others is really really powerful. Thank you, Dr. Meaton. By the way, let me just uh, make it clear that the Prudential Foundation is a supporter of what we do as well in public broadcasting with the Caucus Educational Corporation. Dr. Eatman, I cannot thank you enough. It's the first time you've joined us. It will not be the last. We'll I hope continue. not. No, it will not. We'll stay on this, and we wish you and, and the team at Rutgers Newark and Nancy Cantor, Dr. Cantor, all the best. Thank you. Steve, I, I really hope that we can come back and get some students and maybe other members of my team to work with you and to share this work. That would be great. Love to hear their stories. Thank you, Dr. Eatman. God bless you. Same Walking to you. Board. I'm Steve Adubato. That's Dr. Timothy Eatman. We'll be right back. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Prudential Financial, RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey Sharing Network, NJ Best, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, the New Jersey Education Association, Summit Health, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, and by the Fidelco Group. Promotional support provided by CIANJ and Commerce Magazine, and by NJ Biz. Hi, I'm Joe Roth. In New Jersey, there are nearly 4,000 residents in need of a life-saving organ transplant, and one person dies every three days waiting for this gift of life. One organ and tissue donor can save eight lives and enhance the lives of over 75 people. You have the power to make a difference and give hope. For information or to become an organ and tissue donor, visit www.njsharingnetwork.org. And be sure to talk with your family and friends about this life-saving decision.